If you are a district manager, you probably see data every month related to vaccine refrigerated temperatures at the health facilities in your area. But what do you do with that data? You may refer to it as you are compiling your monthly immunization reports. But do you really examine it? Really examining temperature data is so valuable and it is something that anyone can do. It is one of the ways to figure out whether cold chain equipment is affecting the overall performance of your immunization program. In this video, we will show you which numbers to look at, how to identify problems, and how to find solutions that can help. So let us start by reviewing the specific data you should look at. To gather information, investigate firsthand during a supervisory visit. You will be looking at manually recorded information and the readings on a 30-day temperature recorder, or 30-DTR. Specifically, you will compare the temperatures and alarms that were written down twice a day and the temperatures and alarms recorded on the 30-DTR. Make note of any temperatures that were higher or lower than the desired temperature range and the number of alarms. Observe staff behavior and examine the equipment. If a problem is identified, ask staff why they think the problem occurred and if anything was done to resolve the problem. Check the temperature monitoring chart and other documents since workers should be writing down any actions they take in response to alarms. Once you have gathered all the information and identified problems, work with staff to find solutions together for any problems that are still occurring or recurring. One problem that you may notice immediately is that temperatures are not being recorded manually. What is the solution? If temperatures are not being recorded at all, first check that the refrigerator has a functioning temperature monitoring device. The 30 DTR may not be activated. It may be broken or the battery may be dead. To solve this problem, provide a new temperature monitoring device or request a device from a higher level if you do not have one to provide. Keep a dial thermometer in the refrigerator as a backup. Once you have confirmed that the refrigerator has a functioning device, make sure that workers have the temperature recording forms they need. They may simply need some new forms. Here is a similar problem. Workers may be recording temperature data, but they may not be doing it correctly or thoroughly. Do you see gaps on your temperature charts? Here is an example of a chart that is not properly filled out. Do you see what is missing? This chart shows that temperatures were not recorded twice every day, including weekends. Staff did not write down high and low temperature for each 24-hour period, and alarms may not have been logged. Training and formative supervision may solve this problem. Staff may need some help to understand how to read and record temperatures and alarms. To solve this type of problem, demonstrate how to perform the skill, then have the worker practice it in front of you until they can do it correctly. Now here's another type of problem. Temperatures are too high or too low or alarms have been triggered. Let us look at an example of this. On this temperature monitoring chart, which has been filled out well, we can see that over the past month, six alarms have been triggered because temperatures were too high, above 8 degrees Celsius. When you see evidence like this, it may be a sign that the cold chain equipment needs repair or maintenance. The refrigerator may need basic maintenance, such as defrosting and cleaning or the refrigerator may need repair or replacement. It is also possible that power interruptions or poor quality kerosene are to blame. Sometimes, 
staff at the health facility level can solve this problem. For example, health facility workers should be capable of doing basic maintenance and making sure the refrigerator temperature is set properly. If health facility staff does not know how to do these things, you have an opportunity to provide supportive supervision at the facility. Show them how to do basic maintenance. What if you notice that several other health facilities are also recording a lot of temperature alarms? You may want to offer a practical refresher course at the district level to make sure everyone is able to do basic maintenance. It is possible that a health facility refrigerator needs more than basic maintenance. For bigger problems, health workers will need to ask for help from a district manager or a cold chain technician. Put in place a good process for staff to request repair or maintenance. When you begin thinking through potential problems and solutions, you may identify other gaps in your program that require help from the regional or national level. For example, do you have an available repair technician? Does the technician have time and spare parts for all the necessary repairs? Keep your cold chain equipment needs in mind when it is time to plan your next year's budget. Remember, Analyzing a health facility's temperature data regularly is a good way to understand whether equipment is affecting the overall performance of your immunization program. So, after you have compiled your monthly report, take the time to really look at the information in order to identify problems and come up with possible solutions.